Good morning, how are you guys doing today? Or whatever time it is for you where you are. So today, you guys, I'm finally getting around to making my sandwich bread, okay? I've made bread before, you know, the whole round bread. I've made that, but, and I've made yeast rolls. We are about to get started with trying to do this sandwich bread. I've never done it before. I started to do it and not record it, but I want to record it whether it's a flop or not. My goal is to stop buying sandwich bread and making it from scratch and knowing exactly what you're putting in it and how it's gonna affect you. I don't personally eat a lot of bread, but when I do, I do eat a honey wheat bread. The first time I ever made bread in the pan, that uh, didn't turn out right because I used a regular pan. So I've been watching um, two channels, Faith Family Homestead and Freedom Homestead. So Freedom Homestead is where the recipe came from. Um, however, she got the idea about the bread from that 1870s homestead. And then I actually saw this on Faith Family Homestead. So I purchased two of these. These are Pullman loaf pans with the lid right here and the objective is that when the bread rises in the oven this will give it that shape that you're looking for as opposed to the other bread pan that i was using before did not have that and plus it was a cheap one from the dollar 25 store okay so we're going to use this today so you're going to need this loaf pan I will link it in the description box, okay? So if you want to purchase it from Amazon, purchase it from my link. Let's go over some of the other items that you will need. You're going to need sugar, yeast, mashed potato flakes. Yeah, mashed potato flakes. And they say that's the secret thing that holds it all together. So we're going to see. Dry milk wheat flour and no this is not skins wheat flour all-purpose flour salt butter you're gonna need something to grease your bowl once you get all of your dough mixed together and it's resting and rising and your pan as well and you're going to need warm water and i will also put the ingredients in the description box as well First, we're going to add our water. This is two cups of water. The recipe actually calls for one, um, one and two thirds cups of warm water, but Faith Family Homestead says that two cups will make it less dry. And then you're going to use three tablespoons of sugar, two heaping teaspoons of yeast, and I've already measured my stuff out three tablespoons of instant potato flakes, one fourth cup of dried milk, two and a half teaspoons of salt, two cups of whole wheat flour, and two and three fourth cups of all purpose flour. Six tablespoons of softened butter. So now I'm going to use my attachment, my dough hook. I'm gonna mix this up. Once the ingredients mix, and are combined together i'll set a timer for five minutes and let that mix all up together and then we'll move to the next step so now you want to oil your bowl This is going to keep your dough from sticking. Now you want to knead your dough just for maybe one or two minutes and then place it in a bowl. 
You don't need to add extra flour, but I had too much oil, so that's why I did that. Once you get it in a bowl, just flip it around on its sides just to get oil all over it so it does not stick as it rises. Now you want to cover your dough, and depending on the temperature in your house, this may take one hour to two hours. We'll check back, we'll set our timer for an hour and we'll check back and see what it looks like. Now you want to oil your pan, whether you're using butter or this uh, nonstick spray, which is a vegetable oil or vegetable oil itself. So once you get your dough out, you want to place your pan in front of it. That way you can kind of get an idea for the length of the bread you want to have. Start pressing it down and flattening it out. Once you have it at your desired length or space, start rolling it up. Um, my dough was a little bit oily. I think I put too much oil in my bowl when I set the dough in there to rise. So don't use a lot. If you have excess, just pour it out. And I didn't do that. But um, y'all, this bread still came out just fine. So you're going to roll it. And then you're going to tuck your ends in. Right now, I'm pinching the back of it to make sure it's good and closed. There are no holes because you don't want your bread to fall apart. And you just do this a number of times till you have it the length and size and the way that you want it to look. Once you get your dough to the desired size and roll, um, finish tucking it in and then place your dough into your baking Pullman pan. And then you're just going to flatten it down. But this is my first time, you guys, so I do intend to make one every week. So by the time I should get it down pack and know if I want to make adjustments or not. You want to let it sit until it gets to about right here. I don't know if you can see. When it gets to about right here, then you can put it in a 350 degree oven. I'm going to go ahead and start my preheat while it's sitting and rising. So I'm going to leave it about like that. That way I can look in and see where it is. Get it all down. Yeah. Okay. Y'all actually had the top on backwards, but I did fix it before I baked and wait for it to rise up so I honestly think that it is up enough and it took about almost 30 minutes 25 minutes for it to rise up there so we are about to close it up and place it into the oven for 30 minutes worry about doing my ingredients I do worry about how my oven is going to bake and I just put it in the center I worry about how my oven is going to bake because I need to upgrade my oven to a more proficient propane. So we'll be back in 30 minutes. So I ran out to the store and my youngest child took it out for me. And then I put it back in the oven for another five minutes um, to brown it. But because of how my oven worked, I ended up having to do it for an extra 10 minutes. But you only do it for five minutes. And so you're going to need something to place it on and make sure you're careful. I did not have my mittens. They were in the wash. So I had to use a towel. And then I decided I would use my um, cooling rack and just flip it. So whatever butter you desire, take that and rub it all over the top. I decided I would rub it all over the sides as well. This bread looks so good, you guys. So I did not know which thumbnail I wanted to use. So I just left them all in here and I decide later. And my youngest child kept coming out saying, is it done? It smells so good.
Look at that. That thing look good. I do. That to be my first bread. And you can see the inside of it. It's cooked. Hmm. It's actually cooked. Right. But I had to put it back in there. True. For an extra 10 minutes. Y'all, this bread was so good. I cannot tell you how good it was. Please try this recipe. Thank you so much, Tangi at Freedom Homestead and Faith Family for showing us. So I never really had a need for a bread box, but y'all, I'm about to go buy one. So I just wrapped it in saran wrap. You can do that, and it's still nice and fresh. I really wanted to get it right. Trying to find some balance in my